Shabbat Shalom. James Moody here. I just want to make you aware that we are in a war as old as the beginning of time. Prepare yourself for that. Prepare yourself for war. Shabbat Shalom. That's, that's what I'm, trying, I'm saying y'all and they didn't know that they was going to be that great renowned until the day right they was just like we are we'll never say boy our name gonna be great they're gonna be talking about us for years right, now right. they didn't realize that they know they let us was gonna be all over the world where it's getting so you don't know how important you are to the most high's work that's why it's important to overcome sin mm -hmm. oh, you can't be playing with sin and doing what you want to do and keep it secrets with house of tongue because he gonna bind you every time you don't know how great your story can be. We can be, Abraham said he looked until our day is something we got that they said, I'm going to sit at the table and listen to y'all. So we don't know where we are to the most high and how important we are to his awakening. You see what I'm saying? Wouldn't it be terrible to be known in our book that you kicked against the Shalakim of this day? That that's what you be known for? You kicked against the evil? Do you know you them people that was that was that it happened to? They didn't know their name was gonna be written, and we was gonna talk about how crazy they was. Right. You want to put your name in that? Hmm. Right. 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 So it's important to realize where you at and run the race with all your might, man. Don't play around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's, let's keep moving. So basically what we're talking about is altars, right? So <clears throat> I've been telling y'all about the context of Baal, the marine kingdom, how it's all set up, ancient Canaanite worship. So the Babylonian system of worship, which is um, what we all under, is really the Canaanite system of worship. It's really what it is. So when you look at the land and territory, and I don't want to have to reteach all this, but I'm trying to I'm just give you a synopsis. So... The land and territory of Canaan has always been a set-apart place, right? Yahuwah does things from when? The beginning, right? So if, if Jerusalem was a set-apart place, it's always been a set-apart place. If Sinai was a set-apart place, it's always been a set-apart place. It didn't become a, a set-apart place because Moshe was there. Because Moshe met Yahuwah there. <laughs> yeah, Y'all get what I'm trying to tell you. Moshe met him there. It's not like... Uh, Moshe got there and said, hey, Moshe, why would you come down and hang with me? No, he went up there and met him. So when we look at these contexts, this is the reason why the fallen knew that them places was set apart places. There's other set apart places over there in, 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 on the continent of Africa. I'm just being real with you. There's places, well, this is the reason why our ancestors went and they built. Why? Because Yahuwah would appear to them there. So the context is this, that we heading into a time where we got to do the same thing because Baal, El, uh, of the Canaanites, who was really who the world worship, and they done told you about him. They call him God. El means in their tongue or whatever. So every time they talk about El, they're talking about God. The problem is, like I broke down last time and I showed y'all, that El and God are similar but not the same. El and Yahuwah are similar but not the same. And I guess I got to do a little backtracking, so... Whoever ain't listening, they can listen. All right. So let's do this again. All right. I'm going to get there. So this, this script actually really breaks it down. This is Exodus 6, verse 3. It says, I appeared unto Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov by the name, but by my name was I not known to them. So the world before the time of the advent of us going into Canaan did not know Yahuwah's name. The whole world knew about El, 
The Canaanites were worshiping El before our ancestors got there. Matter of fact, when Moshe uh, and our ancestors um, were in Mitzrayim, they was worshiping El. El got many names. Sometimes they call him Pe uh, Apis. Um, really, it's uh, Osiris, really who El is. He has many different names. But the worship of him has always existed because the Canaanites knew the truth because they dealt with who? The fallen. The fallen let them know that there's a council. The fallen let them know that there's one supreme chief Elohim. Right? They told them that. They taught them these things. Listen, a lot of things that you do on an everyday basis, it was taught by fallen beings. I'm, I'm going to tell you something real. That's going to get a little crazy. Some of the stuff that they taught is not necessarily even a sin. I'm going to get deep with y'all. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to explain it to you. Because what they taught was how to manipulate things in the earth. Anybody build, if you build something, you got to know how to manipulate what? So they took things that, and they, and they corrupted it. You understand what I'm saying? So they took metals. You know, it takes metal to make a what? It's a sword of sin. It is a sin when you murder somebody with it. So what they did was they taught weapons to do what? So they always had a spin in how they corrupted things. But the reason why they know how to do things is because they watch Yahuwah do it. They were agents in the creation. I'm trying to get y'all to see this because y'all don't really understand what I'm telling y'all. If you look in Job, it says that when Yahuwah laid the foundations of the earth, it says the morning stars sang together. The morning stars is a nickname for them. So everything that Yahuwah did, they watched. Certain things they did, Yahuwah got them to do it. They actually put their hands on from instructions for things that Yahuwah told them how to do. So when they came down and started teaching man, they said, this is, what, this is what happened. Man was cut off. So he said, look, what I can do is, I know Adam walked with El, but we're going to teach you how El do things, just worship me. We're going to change just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're going we're gonna to teach y'all to do things in honor of us. Instead of worshiping your whole with it. We know that the bronze labor is made out of wood and metal. So they said, we're going to take wood and metal and become and, and turn it into witchcraft. We're going to create alchemy. We're going to create, you, just, you name all the different forms of uh, witchcraft that they used and manipulated things. Manipulated the things in the earth, they manipulated water, they manipulated mankind, they manipulated everything because they knew how it worked. So when they taught, the Canaanites, these things, they told them, say, hey, look, it's, it's a, it's, we got a boss, <laughs> right? There's somebody that's up there that controls everything, right? But I'm going to show you how to worship him. Listen, but I'm going to show you how to worship him. What's his name, El? Is he not El? Look in the text. You're going to see his name is El. It's not his name, but his title is El. The text says that Yahuwah sits in the council of the L's. I'm going to tell you something that's deep. Now, I should have put this in a lesson, but I didn't. When you study, uh, you know, working on documentary and stuff, when you study that name, you will see at one point in time that West Africa all of a sudden got the name Yahoo. It just came out of, like, you can trace it back. Matter of fact, I was, I was reading like a, uh, what's it do? Alan H. Gabi. Alan H. Gabi is a professor of divinity and Old Testament studies at Duke University. Back in the 30s. So he wrote a book, Lost, uh, Lost Tribes of Myth. This name is book. In his book, he talk about the Negroes. Another, I forget another term. And the Berbers, like, th like three or four different groups. And they talk about how they, they participate in, listen, this is what they call it, Yahoo worship. Yahoo worship. I'm like, I never even heard that term. You go look it up. You're going to see the term Yahwism. He used to make maps. And then, it, uh, uh, matter of fact, it's a map in this book. And it talks about all the tribes that's in the um, west part of Africa, going from north, northwest Africa all the way to the south. And it says Yahwist on certain places. If you go look up the term Yahwist, it's going to bring you to the Pentateuch. If you look up Yahwism, they're going to say the ancient worship of Yahu. And I appeared unto Abraham, Yitzhak, and to Yaakov by the name of El Shaddai. But my name, Yahoo, Yahuwah, was I not known to them. 
So at some point in time, our people were scattered and ended up in the west part of Africa, and then the name Yahoo began to pop up. Why am I saying this? Because the Canaanites did not know that name. They did not know that name. Only name they knew was El. Now, so, so why is this important? Because when do you take on somebody's name? So the promises of the covenant was to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. But if you read Shaul, it says they what? Never inherited the promises. My eye burned this out uh, on, 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 on Midrash. They never inherited the promises. But there was a seed that was going to do what? Inherit the promises. So when it came to um, Sinai, what happened? They came into, and Yahuwah let them know his. The Canaanites, by, def by default, if you listen to that, you'll know that they weren't in covenant. They know that it was an L. They knew he was supreme. They know he had a council. Matter of fact, I, I can we can get to that part. So, I'll show you some of the things that they knew about L. Let me go back, 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 back. That's that's two lessons back. Let me go back again. I'm gonna get there, y'all. Ah, right, ain't no telling how many slides in this thing. Let me go back. Y'all hold on now. Hold on, throw no tomatoes at me. I'm about to. I got to go backwards. I go back some more. I go back some more. And I'm about to. Uh, all right, here we go. So this is the thing that they knew. And this is what they believe. The Canaanites believe by El. They believe he was the supreme God of gods. It's not Yahuwah, the supreme God of gods. They believe that he's one who dwells in heaven. It's not Yahuwah who, who dwells in heaven. They believe that he was a God of thunder and storms. If you study the text, you will see when Moshe, Moshe went up to Sinai, what happened? Thunder and storms. When Yahuwah speaks, it's like thunder. That he's the Elohim of war. Yahuwah Zebo controls crops and vegetation. You know that Yahuwah will curse the heavens that it don't rain. And then you don't have no food. He sits among the council of gods. The text says that Yahuwah sits in the council of the... He's at odds with the God of the sea. Right? So the God of the sea, even in their um, they, they pantheon, is called Yam. Yam is the Hebrew word for sea. He's connected with the ox. Like I told you last time. So this is the reason why our ancestors came out of Misraim. They made a ox. Because they were familiar with the worship of El. Not Yah. El. Because they had a different El. We know that Yahuwah is Elohim. But he's El Shaddai and El Elyon. Right? He's the most high Elohim. So there's one most high Elohim and then there's other Elohims. So I got to get y'all to get to understand that. And real fast, just in case y'all weren't familiar in the previous lessons. So again, El has a consort. Her name is um, Asheroth, Atherat, Enuna. Insert the name. They call, her, call that his wife, right? They call her the sea walker or the, or the walker of the sea. You got Dagon, who's the god of the, uh, of the of sea. One of the many gods of the sea, actually. Uh, Baal Hadad. That's when you start getting into the term Baal. Baal is the son of Dagon. Dagon is the perpetual enemy of Israel. Samson fought against, right? Yonah was in a well, and he went and preached against. The Ark of the Covenant was took to the temple of, right? These are, are, are the Canaanite gods. And so Yam is the, the chief god of the sea. He got two consorts. One of them is called Lotan, who is a dragon. Another one is, and, and the dragons are called Tanim. Tanim is the Hebrew word for dragon. Kothar, I'll tell you how similar, I, I don't know if I told you this last time. Kothar is Baal's priest. If you study their whole study, Kothar made him a house of worship. 
So if you go in the text, you're going to see Kohen, priest, who makes what? A house of worship. So you see in a whole worship system that's almost, but nah, not the same. Because even though they got this story, first of all, they got a wife. You know, Yahuwah ain't got no wife, right? And then they have a different worship system. They don't follow the laws. They don't follow the statutes. They don't follow none of the commandments. Why did they, did they know who El was that didn't follow the laws, statutes, and commandments? I heard three different answers. What is it? Right? Because there was no way. So when we came in the covenant, what happened was Yahuwah became our father. The father sets the law of what? The house. So because Yahuwah wasn't their father, he didn't give them his laws, statutes, commandments. Only those who came in the covenant with him. But they knew of them. It's almost like, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this. It's like somebody asking you, do you know LeBron James? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know LeBron James. You don't know LeBron James. You just know that he exists. You know of him. You might have a whole narrative. Yeah, you know his acts. You might have a whole narrative of how you believe that LeBron James is. You might think, man, LeBron James is a family man. He might have 13 side pieces. Just be for real. Most of them do. But you got a Torah that says that he is a family man. You might think that he, he comes from, he might got three, three or four brothers, and he don't. You can have a whole story because why? You don't know him. So what they did, they knew of El, but they didn't know none of his ways. They just knew his acts. They knew that he existed. They knew that he, that he was in a war with the sea. <laughs> they knew that, matter of fact, that's part of their even creation story. They talk about the whole um, issue with the land and the sea. We talk about the marine kingdom. So he knew all these things. So in the ancient world, they knew that there's one Elohim. They knew, they one chief Elohim. If I say one chief, one chief. Elohim. Elohim. Christianity taught you that there's one Elohim that's a lot. It's a lie. Matter of fact, if you go look up even Yahwism, they'll say the, the term that, you know, they always, Gentiles always coming up with some kind of term. So the term they come up with is monolatristic. So monolatristic means that they believe that Yahuwah, or I'm not, they didn't know about him by Yahuwah, but El was a chief God. Matter of fact, let me take that back because it's talking about Yahuism or Yahwism. They believe that Yahoo is a chief God. But they believe that there's other gods. That's exactly what the Bible teaches. So, but they teach monolatristic, they mean that you're not monotheistic. So they teach it, and this is the, how the snare comes in. They say, well, you're monolatristic. You don't believe that uh, he has all power because you believe there's other gods. That's not what that means. We know that Yahuwah is what? All powerful. We also know that Hasatan is also the god of this world. Some of the stuff just 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 elementary type stuff. We know that Hasatan is what? Y'all still I know we tired and it's hot. The god of this world. So the, the text teach you that he is a god. He's not Yahuwah though. He's not El Elyon and El Shaddai. Right? But he is a L, even his, even L is in his real name. Look it up. That's the reason why all the sons have, most of them have L in their name. Gabriel, Gabriel, right? Micah. Trying to get you to see what's going on. So when they visited the Canaanites, they taught them wickedness. Taught them wickedness. But they also told them the, how things work. That there's a, there's a power structure. There's a council. There's... Um, a, a, a supreme Elohim. And so when they did that, they started to worship their own gods. And this is what we get into about the altars. So everywhere in the land of Canaan is named after Baal. Baal Zephon, Baal Peor, Bath Baal Meon, Bath Meon, Baal Gad, Bath, um, Bath Moth, um, Baal, Kurgith Baal, Baal um, Beer, Baal Hermon, Baal Tamar, Baal Prism, Gurbal, Baal Hanan. So you, everywhere they go is Baal, 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 right? Because the work, the land had been taken by the enemy. 
And the reason why I say take him because it's what? Yahuwah's land. Do we really believe that Jerusalem became Yahuwah's land when we got there? Why do you think the fallen went all there? Why do you think they were there? If next to Jerusalem is Zion and Zion is set apart, wouldn't they be there? If Sinai is close to that area, wouldn't they be there? Why are our ancestors going places? Why is Jacob laying down and seeing, and he's seeing Malachim ascending and descending, ascending and descending? So the point where he called it, this is the gateway of Yahuwah. So that place in that territory was a place that they know of. That's the reason why they was there. So Hasatan took that land for himself. And he named all the places after himself, the Lord. By all means, the Lord. The Lord. So anyway, the Lord of the north, the Lord of the opening, the Lord of the habitation, the Lord of the habitation, the Lord of fortune, the Lord of the high places of the Lord, <laughs> the city of, uh, of the Lord, mistress of the, uh, or the, the Lord's mistress of the well. Uh, that's what Balath beer means. Baal Hermon, the Lord of destruction. Baal Tamar, the Lord of palms, the Lord of breaks. The Lord is gracious. You know what I'm saying in church? Mm, Lord so good. Gurbal, the dwelling of, of the Lord. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyway, so this is the reason why when you look in the text, you see it's a process. So at first, when our ancestors came, they didn't call him Yahuwah. Everybody understand that? But we know his name was Yahuwah. But they didn't know his name. Right? So they called him El Shaddai, El Elyon, El, El Olam. After that, when we came, after we came into covenant, all of a sudden, we start calling him Yahuwah Nisi, Yahuwah Rapha, Yahuwah Shama, Yahuwah Sekinu, Yahuwah Yara, and Yahuwah Zabo. All these were always his name. But it wasn't revealed to the people because they wasn't in. All right. So real fast, I told y'all how the worship of Baal had been so indoctrinated into our people because they wanted to be like the Gentiles that they started even naming themselves at the Baal. Right. And this is First Chronicles 12 and 5. It says, Eluzai, Yerimoth, and, and Belalia. And. Shemira and Sephadiah, Seph I guess, and Huraphite. But Belial means Yahuwah is Baal. So somewhere, some got lost in translation. How, why would they have a name to say, not um, uh, Baal is Baal or the Lord is the Lord, but Baal is Yah? What happened? That means there was some serious mixing. There's some kind of deception that happened. Right? And I told y'all about child sacrifice. I'm going to skip down for time because we're going to actually get to what we're talking about today. And I told you about how they even had houses called ba Baal Barith or the Lord of the Covenant and El Barith, the God of the Covenant. They had even, so they had even houses of worship that was dedicated. It was mixing Yahuwah with Baal, even to this day. Right? So let's, let's, let's get to what we're trying to talk to today. I had to give you the backtrack so we can actually explain this. So let's go to Psalms 118. So just like how they reared up places to Baal, now we have to go and tear them down. You have been born in captivity for that specific purpose. You've been born in captivity for that specific purpose. For you to tear down the altars of Baal and raise up one for Yahuwah. So, the reason why I'm reading Psalms 118, because this is what the Yahuwah put on my Ruach this morning. And this is what we're doing once we go into what we're about to talk about. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is good. Because why? Let, the, let Israel now say, let the house of Aharon say, let them now that fear you who will say, listen, we called on Yahuwah in our, Yahuwah answered us and set us in a large place. Yahuwah is on, I will not fear. What can a man do unto me? Yahuwah taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I. Mm -hmm. It is better to trust in Yahuwah than do what? 
It is better than trusting your whore than do what? So stop trusting in Agent Orange because he ain't going to help you. All nations, but in the name of Yahuwah, I will, I will, they can pass me about. Yay, they can pass me about. But in the name of Yahuwah, they can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of Yahuwah, that has thrust me sore that I might fall, but Yahuwah helped me. Yahuwah is my strength and my song. That's what we're talking about. That's what we just song, right? Yahuwah is my strength and my song and become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation. That's what we heard earlier today. This In the tabernacles of the righteous, the right hand of Yahuwah does what? Say it, say it like you mean it. Y'all got to believe this stuff. Don't stop read. Stop just reading and start believing it. The right hand of Yahuwah is... That's why when you read that verse, you said how um, you was talking about in the song about the resurrection. And, and, and it just hit me all of a sudden that the resurrection goes back to his name. His name was buried in the earth for three days. His name was buried in the earth for three days, y'all. So Yahuwah had to rise up a son to declare it. The right hand of Yahuwah is exalted. The right hand of Yahuwah does validly. I shall not die. I shall not die. But live and declare the works of Yahuwah. This is the mentality you got to have, man. I shall not die, but live. Now I'm going to declare the works of Yahuwah. You better raise up. You better raise up and declare his works. You will let me see this today. His right hand does valiantly. I will declare the works of you. I shall live and not die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but live and declare the words of Yahuwah. Yahuwah have chasing me so hard, but he have not given me over to death. Yeah. Open me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. I will praise Yahuwah. The gate of Yahuwah is which the righteous shall enter. I praise thee for thou hast heard me. I praise thee for thou hast heard me. I praise thee for thou hast heard me and become my salvation. The stones which the builder refused. That's what all of y'all are. That's what we are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what we are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This gate of Yahuwah, which the righteous shall enter, I will praise Yahuwah for he's heard me and that become my salvation. The stones which the builder rejected. It's become the head of the corner. This is Yahuwah's doing and it's marvelous in his eyes. This day which Yahuwah have made, we will rejoice and be glad in him. Yes. Save now, I beseech thee, O Yahuwah. Yes. O Yahuwah, I beseech thee. Send now thy posterity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of Yahuwah. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahuwah. We have blessed you out of the house of Yahuwah. Elohim is Yahuwah. He ain't by all. He ain't by all. Elohim is Yahuwah. Which has showed us his light. Bind a sacrifice with cords even to the horns of the altar. Thou art my Elohim. I will praise thee. Thou art my Elohim. I will exalt thee. I will give thanks to Yahuwah for what? He is good. And his mercy endure forever. See, who will let me know? This is the mentality you got to have when you're tearing down altars. This is the mentality you got to have when you're tearing down altars. Let's keep going. Y'all can sit down. Y'all can sit down. That's the mentality we got to have when we go forward. 
We got to praise and lift them up for he is good and his mercy endure forever. Because he's going to deliver us from our enemies. We're going to live and not die. Isaiah 26 and 7, uh, 19, Isaiah 27, 9. Let's go to Isaiah real fast. Isaiah 26, start at verse 19. This is what the Most High let me see when, when my aunt was talking about that, about Yahushua, when he, when he was singing that song, and I was talking about, we talking about great is thy name forevermore. Great is thy name is thy, thy name forevermore. And he said, um, praise because he, 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 it was resurrectional that he raised up. He has risen from the dead. Because this is the thing. When Yahuwah's name not declared, it's like he's dead. When Yahuwah's name is not declared, it's like he's dead. Because nobody has no knowledge. That means nobody's in covenant. Because those, is, the righteous does what? Declare his name and declare his works. So this is the reason why Yahuwah has to send out a prophet at a specific time to raise up a specific people that his name might be great. Great and mighty. Great and mighty is the king. So when we come, when you see what we're doing right now, you know that a prophet is king. You know that Yahuwah has revealed himself. Because his name was hidden in the world. Because his people were in the grave. Thy dead men shall live together. Together with my dead body they shall rise. Awake and sing ye that dwell in the dust. That was us. For that dew is the dust of herbs. And the earth shall cast out her dead. Why? Because we're going to live and not die. Yes, Come my people. Enter thou out to the chamber. Shut the doors and hide thee. Hide thyself for a little moment. Until the alienation be passed. That's what's coming right now is the alienation. A judgment. We talked about, but I brought it out um, earlier. For behold, who will come without his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth? Why? Because he says it's through judgment that, he, that his name gets what? Exalted. So his name had to be declared before his judgment could come forth. His name had to be declared in the earth by people before his judgment can go forth. Come up, come up, people, and down the chambers, shut thy doors and hide thee for a little moment. To the nation be overpassed. For behold, who will come out of this place to punish the inhabitants of the earth? For their iniquity. The earth shall disclose. Let's talk about this earlier. It disclosed. Another scripture, it says, make inquisition. That means to study and look for. See, this is the reason why. You, listen. So what is the, the text is showing you that Yahuwah wasn't even looking at it. He wasn't even looking for it. Our sins had. Our sins and the things we've been doing has repulsed him. To so bad and to the point where he wouldn't even look at it. He wouldn't even look at it. To make inquisition, that means to go look for it. How, how far do you think Yahuwah got to go to look for something? How far do you think he got to go? El Elyon. How, how, how far do you think he got to, how long he got to think about to remember something? So he said, when this time comes, he's going to make inquisition, which means he's going to look into this. He's going to stop. Why? Because people are calling for him. We talked about last time, righteous Abel. How Abel a bud cried from the ground. You know that when you're a descendant, you're called the blood? You're a descendant. You come from a lineage. That means you're of the blood. So now the blood has to cry out. But the blood didn't even know his name. The blood didn't even know his name. So in the time that they would call for him, the time where he would declare his name is what? His judgment got to go forth. He got to make inquisition. He's got to look into it. He's got to remember it. He's got to count it because the earth can't hold your blood. Ah, come on, come on, come on here. Tell him about that. Right. And Yahuwah said unto Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I know not. Am I to guard my brother? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out unto me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. The 
book of Enoch, chapter 20, verse 6. And I acquired a Raphael, an angel who was with me, and said, Whose Ruach is that, the voice of which reaches to heaven and accuses? He answered, saying, This is the Ruach of Abel, who was slain by Cain, his brother and who will accuse that brother until his seed be destroyed from the face of the earth, until his seed perish from the seed of mankind. Tell them, tell them about how, what the earth does with blood. Huh? Genesis chapter 8. Verse 20 says, Then Noah built an altar to Yahuwah, mm. took some of every clean animal and every clean bird, offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when Yahuwah smelled it, it was a pleasing aroma. And Yahuwah said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man. For the imagination of man's heart imagines evil from his youth. That's right. Neither will I ever strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter, day and night shall not cease. So when he cleansed the earth with that flood, what he was saying is the earth is going to respond to blood. It's going to respond a certain way. It's not going to just take in man's iniquity. He's going to return the iniquity back on man. It's going to groan. It's going to shake and quake. Earthquakes. Storms, all these things are going to get worse and worse as the more blood goes into it because it's not going to just hold on to it. It's going to disclose it. And then at a time, and this is, Yahushua said, you guys won't see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Right. He's saying, you're not going to see me because I want to gather you like a hen yep. gathers his chicks. Right. But I'm waiting for you guys to read Psalms 118 with understanding. So you can look at it and understand how Yahuwah looks at you. So you can stand here and realize that he's not going to let you die. He's not going to let your soul see corruption. That's right. And the blood, the blood is going to go into the earth and it's going to disclose it. Because Yahuwah demands a reckoning for man's blood. That's right. For man was made in the image of Elohim. So man will be judged by a man. Hallelujah. So when we're looking at this... <clears throat> So the earth, the earth cannot bear our iniquity. The Yahuwah didn't create the earth to bear our iniquity. This is the reason why eventually there's got to be a way. Resurrection. There's got to be a resurrection. That means that the earth cannot hold us. It wasn't created for that. You understand know what I'm saying? So that means that iniquity, I mean, not iniquity, but inquisition has to happen. Who has to look into it and then the earth got to give you up. But the earth keeps record of the blood that's spilled. So there's coming a time when who going to look at this and he's like, man, okay. I had to turn my, remember the text says that he had to turn his face but, uh, for a moment. Now he's going to turn back to it. He's going to look at it. He's going to make inquisition. He's like, okay. All right. Let me find out who's owed what blood. What nations are owed what blood. What people are owed what blood. What families I old wet blood. And let me visit them. Because it's blood for blood. A life for a life. So when you look at this, 21 says, Behold, and it, again, you says, Blessed is he that what? Cometh in the name of Yahuwah. We haven't done that now. We haven't done that till now. We've been coming in the name of Baal. But he said, No longer will you call me Baal, but. Husband, what does a husband do? Carry the name. He that comes in the name. For 21, for behold, Yahuwah comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall disclose, see the earth, gonna, the earth about to snitch on some people. Going to disclose her blood and shall no longer cover her slain. Why? Because it wasn't created to do that. So it has to give it up. 27. 
In that day, Yahuwah with a sword, great and strong sword, going to punish Leviathan. So Yahuwah, this is why I was telling, telling y'all in the house about Indian Sea, right? But Yahuwah right now is about to do something that he haven't done. I mean, he's done it. He prophesied that he's going to do it, and it's about to come to pass. When he slays Leviathan, is it? It's over. Everybody say it's over. When he slays Leviathan, it's a wrap. Because, you know, Leviathan is the king of the sea. Leviathan, and I ain't getting too, too deep in this today, but Leviathan is Hasatan's priest. That's why his name is Levi Atan. Wow. 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 So Yahuwah is going to kill him. Yahuwah is going to slit his throat. If you go look at the time of, of Job, Yahuwah asked Job the question. He says, can you put a hook in Leviathan? He's like, is he coming to make a covenant with you? In other words, like, you, do you, you got enough guts to take on Leviathan? Can't nobody else in this world. He's basically letting you know nobody in the world can handle Leviathan. Are you comparing yourself? Who, like, who you, like, what are you doing? So how do you who go from can nobody, nobody can tame him to him getting slain in the sea? That means there's a major shift that's going to come. Something that haven't even happened from the days of old. There's a supernatural occurrence that's about to take place. There's a whole other level of something that's about to happen. The text says when Yahuwah said, he said he see thrones, that, um, Daniel, he said he seen thrones cast down. What, what, what do you think that is? If he's seeing thrones getting kicked down, he's saying he's seeing powers of countries being destroyed. A country can't fall unless that principality first falls. Get out of the Christian and stop watching movies and think that in the beginning, there were so many angels that fell, and that was it. That's not how it works. There's a continuous war that's been happening since then to now. Angels been falling. Yaakov seeing angels ascending and descending. It's been happening. So now, all, those, all these things is coming to a fore. Why? Because we've been in the grave for three days. Now we enter into the chamber because there's any nation coming because Yahuwah is going to slay the earth. For the blood that's in the earth, right? And while he's slaying them, he's going to slay Leviathan. Why? Because they tied him together. Because Leviathan is their priest. The piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, he shall slay that dragon, the Tanin. I just told you, that's what the Canaanites call him. That's, you look it up in your quarters, you're going to see Tanin in the sea. In that day, sing unto ye a vineyard of red, red wine. I, Yahuwah, keepeth it. I will water every moment, lest any hurt it. Hurt it. I will keep it um, night and day. Fury is not in me. Who will set the bribes and thorns against me in the battle? I will go through them. It's like, if you try to stop me from doing this, I'm just going to burn you up. That's who was saying. When he says, who can put a briars and thorns? That's a hedge. So he says, who can hedge me out when I get ready to do this? I'll just burn you up. Five. Or let me take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. He shall, he shall make peace with me. In other words, he's saying, they're going to lay down. They're going to lay down their arms. He shall cause them of Jacob to do what? So when he does all these things, when you see us awaken, have, have we not awakened? Are we not preparing? Yeah. That's the entering into the chamber, right? So, me, we, my bad, restored, and now we're going to preparing, right? What was that? What verse was that? Six, right? So when these things happen, when he slays Leviathan, that's what I'm telling you is the end. Why? Because when he slays Leviathan, Jacob is going to take root. When he slays Leviathan, Jacob is going to take root. You want to know why? Because Jacob was swallowed up by Leviathan. Yona. 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 Was swallowed by what? And then what happened? He had to spit him out. He had to spit them out. Like I told you, in that land, they worshiped Dagon, the god of the sea. So when they saw that, they knew it was a prophecy saying, man, this, this people or this person, is going, they're going to tame the sea. Who can hook Leviathan? Come on, y'all. That's the question. How can he be swallowed by a dragon and taken down to the depths of the earth and then, then he had, the serpent had to give you up? 
We shall live and not die. Just like the earth. Just like the earth. It got to it give you up, all right? So it has, we have to come out. And after that, who is going to, we're going to do what? Take root. We haven't took root yet. Because we got to be planted somewhere to take root. Right. He shall call them a Yakov to take root. Israel's going to boss them in blood. Blood, blood. blood. I said blood. I'm sorry, y'all. And fill the face of the world with what? He has smit him as, as he smote those that smote him. Or is he slain according to the slaughter of them that are slain by him? In measure, when he do it, shoot it forth, thou will debate with it. He stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind. All right? Here we go. Last verse in this. By therefore shall, everybody say it with me. By this shall the iniquity of Jacob be purged. By this will the iniquity of Jacob be purged. And he's going to tell you what you got to do. Everybody ready? Yep. You want to know how to get rid of your iniquity? And this is all the fruit to do what? We he maketh all the stones of the altar as that are beaten asunder. And the groves and the images... That's the reason because that word image means standing image. That's worship of the of Asherah and Baal. So when we can come up and crush Baal's altars, our iniquity is purged. This also is tied into Leviathan. Remember now, Leviathan gets slayed at the exact same time. Because these altars are to him. The temple of Dagon, the dragon, the old serpent, Hasatan. The beast from the, let's keep going. Deuteronomy 4, 33, 35. This is what he says. And this, when you do that, what you're doing is tearing down their kingdom and then raising up some to Yahuwah's name. That's what he's, at, he's telling us. Erase by all. Kill the Lord. You know that your oppressors have a house they call the house of lords. called the house of lords. Hmm. Deuteronomy 4, 33-35. Did ever the people hear the voice of Elohim speaking in the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard and lived? Listen. Or have Elohim essayed to go and make him a nation, what? From the midst of another nation. You know he's doing that again? 